Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Welcome back, family, to Let's Speak It Out Loud. I am your host, Goddess Candace the Alicorn. And once again, it's my honor and my pleasure to be with you all here this afternoon, evening, morning, or whatever time you listen to this, guys. It is my honor and my pleasure once again. Ah. Um, I hope we're doing well today. You know, I know the world is kind of crazy and going on right now, but I appreciate every single person who has tapped into this podcast. Um, Listening to this podcast, guys, you need to understand. Here, we are the soul tribe of the copper-colored aboriginal of higher vibration. And what do we do here? We have insightful and impactful conversations. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. But before we get into it, once again, thank you all who have been listening. And if you are new to this platform, welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, guys, it's been so crazy. Um, I can do nothing but continue to thank all the people who have been listening, all the people who have been donating to the podcast. You guys are special. You guys are feeling what I'm putting down, and I appreciate you, you know? I thank you so very much. And if you would like to donate to the podcast, guys, feel free, because donations are always accepted and appreciated. The information definitely will be down and below if that's something that you feel the need to want to do. Um, like I said, I appreciate you because your donations, they let me know that you feeling what I'm feeling. You feeling, you picking up what I'm putting down. Okay, and that you appreciate what I'm doing and you want to help me get this platform to the highest levels that I can. And I promise you that all I'm going to do is speak truth. I'm going to speak it out loud. You may not like what I say sometimes, but I ain't going to never lie to you, y'all. I'm going to give you my opinion on some things, but I'm also going to fill you with love. So I hope that today, when you hear my voice, it uplifts you. Now, I hope that you feel light. I hope that you understand that you are worthy and you are worth it and you have the right to have an opinion and a thought and you have a right to feel good, okay? So guys, like I said, I hope we're all doing well today. Um, I'm going to have a serious, serious conversation with you guys today because we family, we're community. And we need to talk about some things. Um, I just wonder, have you guys noticed, are you paying attention to the energies that are going on right now at this time? I want to know, have you noticed the energies that are going on at this time and are you paying attention to them? All the craziness that's happening. Remember, couple of podcasts before and even with the last podcast I told y'all the battle that we're fighting is not a physical battle this is a spiritual battle that's going on right now in America and on this planet and you light workers wake up so we're gonna talk about some difficult things that have happened guys because they're touching my heart and they're on my spirit you know at this time All this negative and violent energy that's going on, (sighs) y'all. Boston, the mass shooting. Givaldi, Texas. Oh, my God. The mass shooting. People are going crazy. And that's why I I just attempt to stay in a state of peace, y'all. I'm attempting to stay in a state of peace no matter what's going on. You know, this world is in a state of misguided chaos. But before I get deeper into this, excuse me, y'all. The one thing I have to say is, I'm so heartbroken. And I'm so sorry. And I send my condolences to all the parents of those babies in Uvalde, Texas. You know, I I went to college in Houston. I told y'all that. I went to Texas Southern. I was in an Ocean of Soul marching band, the the internationally famous ninth wonder of the world, the ocean, under the direction of maestro Mr. Benjamin J. Butler is when I was there. 
who created the Ocean of Soul before Prof. Butler got there. It was just Texas Southern Merchant Tigers. You know, so I lived in Texas for 10 years, guys, 10 years um, before I left that place. And Texas is definitely a unique place. So my condolences, guys, go out to the families. Now, this podcast is going to be deep, y'all, because it touches my heart. Y'all might hear me cry because I just don't understand. I want to give my condolences to everybody who lost their life. You know, the grandmother, the children. And I also want to give my condolences to Miss Adrian Riaz. Now, I know y'all might be thinking, what? That was Salvador Ramos's mom, the 18-year-old. You know, she's the mother. Miss, I'm sorry, Adriana. Adriana, did I mispronounce that? I'm so sorry. Adriana Riaz. Like I say, that was Salvador Ramos's mom. And she's in such disbelief that her son was capable of such violence. So even though this horrific thing happened, guys, I need y'all to have sympathy and compassion for that boy's mama. Because it's not her fault. Okay? It's not her fault. I have compassion for every single person. There's so much loss that has happened and ridiculous loss that has happened in this country, guys. And we got to wake up and look at some things. Like I say, people are going crazy. Why? Because the world is in a state of misguided chaos. And I'm definitely trying to get us to concentrate on love, light, awareness, and passion with self first. So I'm going to get into this once again. So we all know on Tuesday, the 24th, you know, Rob Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. Salvador Ramos, 18-year-old, went into the school and he murdered 19 students and two teachers. Oh, my God. Fourth graders, y'all, babies. And the reason it touches me so much is because I'm a mother. I'm a daughter. I'm a grandmother. And today, my grandbaby, we went to her event at her school today. Her award ceremony, though, and she's third grade. When school starts in a new school year, she'll be in the fourth grade. Same age as those poor babies. You know, now this is going to get, this is going to touch a lot of y'all, but I'm going to tell you. I'm just going to read here exactly what the report said. So report states that there was no known mental health history. You know, they say Mr. Ramos legally purchased two AR platform rifles. On the 17th and the 20th of May. You know, and bought 375 rounds of ammo on May 18th. Texas Senator John Whitmire. You know, he told Fox Affiliates, KCPQ TV. You know, citing a briefing from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms and Explosives. That this is what happened. You know, and Lieutenant Christopher Oliveras of the Texas Department of Public Safety, he told CNN that all the victims, y'all, all these babies were in the same fourth grade classroom at Rob Elementary School. Let me tell y'all something. When I sat in my grandbaby's classroom today and I looked at those babies, It was such a joyous occasion, but I can't get this out of my head, y'all. And I'm going to tell you why. We're going to get into this. And once again, my condolences are to the family. All the families. All the families. I don't know what it is to lose a child. But I can tell you this. I couldn't imagine being a parent outside of that school, y'all. 
wondering if my grandkid was the one who got hit. I couldn't imagine that. I need y'all to understand. Can you feel me? Because we're going to talk about this today. And I know some of y'all might be thinking, well, why is she talking about this? This don't have nothing to do with us. It does. Even though this is a podcast for the copper colored vibration, we're a community. And you don't frown on other communities when things happen. See, that's the problem in America. People think it's not my problem. So I'm not, hey, hey, those people, those people, well, those goddamn people are Americans. And excuse me, y'all, this podcast today is about to get real graphic. I'm going to cuss a whole lot of motherfucking words because I feel for those parents waiting and waiting and waiting outside and not knowing if your child was the one that was taken away, your innocent baby. I want y'all to feel me on this, you fathers, you mothers, you grandmothers. I don't care where it happens or what happened. Think about it. Think about it. Okay? Think about it. Babies. They hadn't even had a chance to. They may have had their first crush in the fourth grade. (laughs) But they haven't even had a chance to have a love. Make real mistakes in life. Become better people, great adults, change vibrations on this planet. You know, we have to detox and vibrate higher during these times. Let go of all the fear. You know, every day is a new beginning. And there are certain energies and powers who feed off of our fears. And let me tell you something. They say that there was no history of mental health history. But guys, y'all got to understand something. We just came out of a pandemic. Okay? So on Wednesday, the Texas Governor Greg Abbott said that Ramos had posted his plans on Facebook prior to the killings, the murders of these babies. Okay? The morning of the shooting, he posted this on Facebook. In the first post, he reportedly said he was going to shoot his grandmother. And after he shot her, Abbott said that he posted again and wrote, I shot my grandmother. Then about 15 minutes before the shooting at the Robb Elementary School, Abbott said Ramos posted again. I'm going to shoot an elementary school. According to the authorities, you know. Now, let me stop right here. Well, let me go a little further. It says Ramos reportedly barricaded himself inside a classroom, shooting anyone that was in his way. An official said Wednesday, Ramos was shot and killed by a Border Patrol agent who was working near the school and rushed in when the shooting began. A law enforcement source told the Associated Press that. Okay. Once again, y'all, I'm so sorry, parents. I'm so sorry for your pain, and I'm so sorry for your loss. Nobody wants to lose a child in such a horrific way. Nobody wants to lose a child at all. I have family members who have lost children, not in to murder or things like that. But, you know, I'm going to speak on this. My nephew, he passed away and drowned when he was two years old. And it was the most horrific thing, horrific thing. That I've ever seen, experienced. And if you've never lost a child, y'all, you will never, ever understand what that parent goes through. Never. To never be able to see your baby again. What kind of shit is that? But to lose, but that was from an accident. But to lose your child because someone maliciously 
who they say didn't have a history of mental illness. But we're going to talk about that too, y'all. We're going to be here for a minute. Goddess Candace is going to get real. My wings are flapping in the wind as an alicorn. And I know those babies have turned into angels. So I'm speaking for those babies. Because the president of the United States stated... When are we going to stand up to the gun manufacturers, lobbyists, and when are we going to, you know, he was fussing. But I want to say to y'all, this is not a gun issue. Stop playing these games with people, y'all. That's what I'm going to say. I said I'm going to touch on this a little bit. Okay. (laughs) So the first thing about all of this that I have a problem with is that those babies lost their lives. Okay. I can't can't say it enough, y'all. I can't say it enough because I can't imagine as much as anybody who knows me personally that's listening to this podcast. I love my grandbaby to no end. She's the same generation as those poor babies. And they're fear and they're scared. And think about the ones who are still alive, y'all. We got a problem. And we can't send no fake ass counselors up in there and you fake ass psychiatrists who are going to be like, well, you know, they're suffering from PTSD. So let's give them this pill. Uh -uh. Uh-uh. 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 Don't give no babies no pills. Y'all going to have to put in the work because the system created this power. Okay, here we go, y'all. This problem. Excuse me. The system created this problem. And trying to make everybody think something different and that it's a gun issue. Well, he legally purchased the gun. But I'm going to tell you the disparities of what I have a problem with. Okay. And my copper colored people put in my comments if you think I'm wrong about what I'm about to say. Okay. Or if you think differently. Because you might think I'm wrong. But I'm going to bring up a point to you and I, I want you to see. And if you can't see it, something wrong with you with what I'm about to say. And I say that. That's my opinion because y'all going to feel me. Number one, my biggest problem is this. This goddamn boy put the shit on Facebook. Anybody out there been in Facebook jail? Hmm? Hmm? Now, this is the thing I have a problem with. And some of y'all might think that I'm wrong, but the people who've been in Facebook jail know that I'm right. You talk about with this new metaverse and all this and that, your algorithms and and picking up this and that. Let me tell you something. Had any person, copper colored person, a.k.a. y'all call us black, y'all call us African-American, but I ain't come from Africa and a whole bunch of us did not come from no Africa. We was already here before the European came here, but that's a different story. However, so when I refer to the term copper colored aboriginal, I'm talking about us that were here Before King George and all those guys came over here. Before Christopher Columbus got lost in the Caribbean in 1492. All of that. I'm talking about us that were here before any European came here. Because you got to remember. Even the Hispanic Mexicans. That's what the Aztecs are. Oh, that was the Americas or Turtle Island. Okay? So my first problem is this. He put on Facebook, allegedly, that's what they said, Texas governor. I shot my grandmother. Let me tell you something. If any copper-colored individual would have put that on there, Facebook would have contacted the powers that be. FBI, CIA, you know, uh, uh, ATF, somebody. And if I'm lying, I'm flying. I'm probably going to be put in Facebook jail because of this post. Because of this podcast. I don't give a shit. But I want the facts known. The disparities of what's going on. Because you have to understand, regardless that he was Hispanic. On the census, people who have migrated here have the option to say whether they want to be white or not. So this system is set up to only look at us and y'all continue to look at us, the copper color and the whole goddamn country is going crazy of every other nationality. Get with it, y'all. Get with me on it. Get with me on it. 
He put on Facebook, I shot my grandmother. And then, so, you know, Facebook, you're making an excuse. My, uh, the algorithms oftentimes have a hard time picking that up. Bitch, please. Because then when he put on there, I'm going to shoot an elementary school. Y'all saw that. Y'all saw that. Or are you so busy watching every indigenous aboriginal account? Every quote unquote black person account. Every misnomer name African American account. That y'all didn't see that. I know people who done been in Facebook jail for saying shit. But I've seen a whole lot worse on there. So don't give me that shit. That your algorithm couldn't pick that up. Had you cared about something other than the shit y'all doing behind the scenes, maybe these babies and these two teachers who love teaching would still be here. What y'all think about that? Hmm? Hmm. And I also have a problem with the fact where I told you it said Ramos was shot and killed by a Border Patrol agent who was working near the school and rushed in when the shooting began. A law enforcement source told the Associated Press. I have a problem with that as well. America, you keep talking about these gun issues and this and that. We have so much money to do less lethal things. We'll never know why he did this. People can assume, people can do whatever, but we'll never know why he did this. I have some theories, and I'm going to share them with y'all too, but that's highly just my opinion. But we'll never know why, because he's dead. Now, I understand the fact that he may have been shooting back or whatever, but trust me, there are so much non-lethal things that we could use, you know? We need to find out what was going on with this boy and why did he choose to kill these babies? But we're so gun ho gun hungry as officials, but you don't want the people to have guns. That's a whole nother story. Okay. I believe in the second amendment. I've been looking at articles when people using all this mass shooting things. About, well, we shouldn't be open carried. Second Amendment, we got the right to bear arms. And it's getting to the point where you're going to need to have the right to bear arms. Simply because people are losing their fucking mind and this energy that's going on out here, y'all. He bought 375 rounds of ammo on May 18th. That's what Texas Senator John Whitmire said. That's what he told the Fox affiliate, KCPQ TV. Citing a briefing from the Bureau of Alcohol, excuse me, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives. Now, this is my thing. All right. Another disparity. Me, law-abiding citizen, in my 50s, Aboriginal woman i.e. they call me a black woman in America. Had I gone to go and purchase two AR, what is it, platform rifles on the 17th and the 20th, I would have been reported. They would have been investigating me. You guys are so busy looking at the quote-unquote what y'all call black people and what we do and this and that, that everybody else is killing our babies. Am I lying? I'm flying. Am I lying? I'm flying. Come on, family. Come on, soul tribe. Talk to me. Talk to me. You're so busy watching us and so busy pulling us over for no reason. So busy lying for when you arrest us for driving while black. When you arrest us for eating. And I watched a video the other day. Eating in the mall with our family while black. Coming into a store while black. Any person in America can call the police on an indigenous, aboriginal, copper-colored individual, a.k.a. 
as y'all label us as black, because black is not a race. Once again, I told you, and white is not a race. It's a status within America. That's why immigrants who come here can choose to pick white in this country. You don't believe me? You don't believe me? Check it out. And I ain't talking about going to Google. Talk to some of your friends who are immigrants, whether wherever they are from across the world. They have a choice. But we are being called two different continents. Not two different countries, two different continents. We're being called African American. <laughs> Misnomer. The fuck out of here. Any and everything we do, you're so busy watching us, you're killing us, you're doing this and that. I'm so sick of you motherfuckers lying about everything. You're too busy watching honest people that you didn't see this shit coming. You're too busy putting people in Facebook jail for speaking their mind and speaking truth. But this goddamn boy posted and on Instagram, look it up, y'all. He posted and the young lady allegedly said he posted on Instagram. The same thing. And she was afraid. Bitch, your ass should have got on the phone right then and there. Listen, this crazy dude right here. I'm talking to him on Instagram. He just told me he about to go kill his grandmama and shoot up a school. What was that? Because let me tell you something. This is the one of the most horrific things that I've heard in such a long time. You know? One of the most horrific things that I've heard in a very, very long time. And it's sad. And we as a country, guys, people are manipulating and playing with us, which is killing our children. Now, let's touch on this. They said he had no prior mental history. Well, first of all, okay, he's Latino. I don't I didn't look up to see if he was Mexican or what type of Latino he is. And I don't mean that in any type of prejudice way. I feel so terrible for his mother as well, because you don't expect your kid to go murder 19 goddamn fourth graders and two teachers. When you've tried to give them a good life and you've tried to teach them things. So, guys, pray for that woman, too, because she lost her child, too. And let me tell you something. The true educators, and, no, and wait a minute, and let me say this, let me back up before I go there. And those two teachers, they had children, they had families. Their children lost a parent. Their mate lost a mate. Now, I know some of you guys may have lost a parent to anything growing up. It could have been violence, it could have been cancer, it could have been stroke or whatever. How did you feel losing that parent as a child? Huh? How did you feel with that? Y'all don't get me twisted up in here today. Because I don't know what the fuck y'all think this is and what this is about. But if nobody's going to say anything, but you're just going to keep publicizing and using this to say, see, this is why we need to get rid of guns. No, it's the fucking system. It's the system. The system is too busy. Too damn busy. Watching quote unquote, black communities and overly policing black communities and overly attacking black communities that y'all just letting this whole goddamn country go to hell. Letting us go to hell. Letting it go to hell. This could have been prevented. Now, I'm not blaming Facebook or anybody else. I'm just saying Fuck around on Facebook and your ass be in Facebook jail. You can wake up one morning, your whole Facebook account can be deleted. I know so many people who've been banned from Facebook. Come on, y'all. Come on. Let's see the reality of what it is. And the reason I'm speaking on this is because that's terrible. And I don't care how, what you feel. If you are a parent... then this is going to haunt you for a very, very, very long moment. And be grateful and thankful that your child wasn't there. And send love and prayers and upliftment. Now, y'all can get out there and shake a damn sign if you want to. But gun control, this is a good issue. Don't fall for that shit. This is a system issue. This is a system issue. It's not a gun issue. Guns have always been America. Let me tell you something. There are countries around the world. Ask yourself this. Here we go. My favorite line. Riddle me this. 
<laughs> there are countries around the world who have gun laws. And their gun laws are, aren't even as strict as ours. They don't have strict gun laws in place, but people ain't murdering motherfuckers all day long, and let alone taking out schools full of children. Don't get it twisted, Sandy Hook. They said this is the worst, worst school mass shooting since Sandy Hook, y'all. Since Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook, what was it, uh, 20 children? And six adults? Come on. Come on. And as I looked around my granddaughter's school today, I said to myself, you know, her school is really, really strict. Um, I'm in the state of South Carolina, and the school that she attends <laughs> it wasn't by choice. It's the, just the area. Her school is predominantly white and Hispanic. It was. I was looking at the children. There's like three black kids in her class. And, okay, so she's at this school, and it's a really, really great school. It's a public school. I can't complain about this one because I'm that grandma, regardless of what my daughter does, I'm that grandma, I'm coming up to the goddamn school and I'm going to put the voice on and let the teacher know that this young child here has a family and a support system and you won't treat her any kind of way and you won't make her feel less than in any kind of way. So you got that there. You're in a, a decent neighborhood, you got a decent school. Then on the other hand, say you're in a all quote unquote so called black neighborhood. The schools are underfunded. There's no secu the only security there is metal detectors. You chaining kids to um mentally challenged kids to chairs when they have outbursts. Listen, when I was growing up, we had special ed programs and stuff like that. I never saw a teacher in my day with a special ed student or a special needs student being drug or the police department being called. And let me say this to y'all. I'm from Flint, Michigan. And let me tell you something. The police were always there. We had community policing. We're the birthplace of community policing. Okay? When I was there, Officer Charles Woods, Officer Nelson, they were at our school. And they lived in our neighborhoods. So the police looked like us in our neighborhood. I could go to Officer Woods' house because I knew where he lived. And his daughter and I had the same name. She passed away years ago um, from sickle cell. But they took us to ball games and made sure we were safe and I had a positive experience with the police department all my life until I went to college in Houston, Texas. And that was the first time I ever got called a nigga in my life. 17 years old, 1988, walking down Blodgett Street, going to band practice. A Houston police department officer pulled him and said, hey, gal, come here. I looked at him, kept walking. I'm from Michigan, y'all. You know, I don't know about this shit. He said, hey, nigga, come here. And whipped his car up in front of me. He said, let me see your ID. And what was the probable cause? I'm walking, about to step on campus. Coming from my friend's apartment, which was right next to campus. So I'm walking, about to step on campus. Oh, girl, you ain't hear me talking to you, nigga. I looked at him. I said, well, I didn't hear you call me because that's not my name. He said, oh. He looked at my ID. You one of them Yankees. Yeah, you going to learn down here. You're going to learn down here. And this is what I believe saved my life. Because I could have been Sandra Bland. Say her name. What saved my life, there was a black officer with handlebar, a mustache called Officer Simp. Anybody went to Texas Southern during that time, 88, 92, uh, and later on, because I think Simp was there for a good while. He was campus police. Simp pulled up and looked, and he pulled up and he said, Go, go on to class. He talked to the officer. Officer left from around campus. And he told me, go on to class. I saw him later on. He said, let me tell you something. You're down here in the South now. You will come up missing. That's why I traveled around the campus so much. Because things will happen to y'all here. And you're not from here. Because he told me, I'm going to. The police officer told me, Houston police officer, you're going to learn how to act down here, gal. First of all, who the fuck is Gap? 
You know, who the fuck is Gal? So, Houston was never a good experience for me. And even when we had our anniversary, I haven't been back. You know, because I was going to go back for our band director's 50th anniversary and things like that. People were flying back in from all over the country because Benjamin Butler touched our, our, our lives. But, listen... Everywhere in this country, every person is treated better than us. Y'all so busy watching us that poor little babies are getting killed of other nationalities. Because cause we getting killed every day. And even with body cameras on, police officers are still lying about it. So, like I say, me being a law-abiding citizen... I don't have the opportunity to go in and buy anything, a gun like that, that fast. And I'm in my 50s and this boy had just turned 18. Trust me, that's going to be a check of a certain amount of days. South Carolina don't play that no way. And, you know, you can carry a gun with permits and stuff here in South Carolina, but you ain't just about to get no damn gun tomorrow, i.e., that all changed, too, with Dylan Roof in Charleston, South Carolina. Young Caucasian boy went to the church. We welcomed him in. You know, he prayed with the congregation. He ate with the congregation. Uh, Sen- I'm sorry, was he a senator or a congressman? Guys, put it in the comments to, to let me know. You killed, you killed this man. Long-standing uh, senator. Con- oh, excuse me. Congressman, I'm not sure which one he is. I'm going to have to check that. But this is the part I'm getting to. After he murdered those people in, what was it, Mother Emanuel Church? Forgive me, y'all. That just hit my mind. I didn't pull up my research on that, but I'm very well aware of what the hell happened here in Charleston, South Carolina. Because I'm in South Carolina, but I'm not in Charleston. And... The police department, after Dylan Roof murdered all these so-called black people, these indigenous aboriginal people here, they took him to Burger King because he was hungry. Really? Get the fuck out of here. But George Floyd had a knee on his neck for nine minutes, and we're still trying to say, well, what should we do? Was it really a crime? Ahmaud Aubrey. well, was it really a crime? The shooting in Massachusetts. Well, we're going to try to look after hate crime. We, we, we think it's a hate crime. Bitch, all of it's a hate crime. All of it. And I need y'all to understand this. Now I can go back to this. Those teachers and educators during this pandemic, they told y'all that this isolation was going to affect these children. I come from a family of educators. I'm an educator. You know, amongst other things. I come from a family of educators. And I come from a family of educators who actually care about their students. They weren't there just to get a paycheck. It was an honorable job for them to create a mindset. And and, and the upliftment of a future generation. They were prideful in that. On both sides of my family. Great, 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 great grandparents. Educators. Although compulsory education. Some talk to y'all. You know that's a different conversation with me as well. But I'm making a point. Those teachers who cared about their children. They told y'all. This pandemic was going to have a lasting mental effect on these kids. So for them to say there was no history that we can find of him having mental issues. Well, we'll never know because shit. I just don't believe we could have killed him. And we're telling everybody else we need gun reform. Well, fuck. We need police reform. And I know Mr. Biden. You just um, put that executive order up where the federal government can't use, they have to use um, non-lethal, non-lethal first. I saw it, I read it. Excuse me, y'all, let me get my water. I read it. Non-lethal first, but local agencies have to decide how they're going to do it. But there's going to be a national database now. Where cops who do misconduct and things like that 
can't skip around from different police departments across the country. So you kill somebody over here and, and, and your sergeant and your captain and all of them throw it under the rug and hide it. And then you got a family crying and then you you leave from, say, uh, the city of Detroit and then go to Florida and become an officer. Nah, not no more. Not no more. So I appreciate that part of it, Mr. Biden. That's one of your policies that I do appreciate. Don't know how well it's going to work because <laughs> this system, whenever you make a law, <laughs> the wicked always change the game. So that's what y'all got to understand, too. The wicked always changes the game. So I need you to know and understand, guys. Light workers, I'm calling y'all. I'm calling all the light workers and spirit guides and guardian angels to come and touch the hearts of those family members. And I know it's going to take a long time to give them healing. To give them healing. You know, Sandy Hook happened in December 2012. Yeah, I got it right here in my notes. I found them. Gunman killed 20 children and six adults. And this is the thing with me, guys. Now, with this Mr. Ramos, we know how he got his gun. But these mass shooters, no parent seems to know how they got that gun. Because there's a certain freedom that other nationalities take for granted. When we tell you all about white privilege and things like that, that shit is real. Because let me tell you something, there's no way an aboriginal, indigenous person of color could have walked in there, in that school, without being questioned, like this little boy was. And I call him a little boy, because I'm a grown-ass woman, and I understand at 18 years old, you don't know shit no way. But what drove this boy to go and kill children, we'll never know. I believe he should have had a trial. See, that's the problem, too, in America. <laughs> Our law enforcement. <sighs> Bitch, they going to kill you. <laughs> you got a gun. But <laughs> we're not judge and juror. And I know some of y'all saying, that bitch should have been killed. Well, what if that was your child? Think about the Columbine guys. Trench coat mafia and all that. Think about how their parents feel. What if tomorrow morning you wake up and your child is in the news? Because Mr. Ramos' mother, she didn't believe it. She even went to the hospital with her mom and she's like, my son loves his grandmother. And they were like, well, where are you going? I'm going to look for my son because she didn't believe it. My son is not capable of such violence. Well, her son has something going on inside of him. And guys, hear me. A lot more children are going to have some issues because that whole pandemic and that isolation, it messed with their psyches that weren't developed and their social development. Their social development was stifled for two years. In some states like California and New York, y'all just locked motherfuckers in the house. I am an introvert, but I have to be outside. I have the sun. Then you scare people. Oh, you you don't go to your grandma's house. You're going to kill your grandma. You know what psyche? When children hear these things, not adults, they look at things from a child's eye, a child's perspective. They don't know a lot of things that we know and have seen a lot of things that we've seen. I don't care if he is 18. He was 17 before that. And 16, he was 16 and 17 during the pandemic. Y'all know teenagers ain't full of nothing but hormones, and I'm not making excuses. Don't y'all hit me up to my, she's making excuses for a murderer. I'm fucking am not. I'm just saying. If we're going to be real, y'all, we got to let's speak it out loud and tell each other the truth about it. Now, back to when I was telling you about my granddaughter's school. Either one of the schools, like I say, that man who went to that grocery store who stalked it out the days before and he has a manifesto, that bitch can't even spell manifesto. So what's really going on? You know, I begin to question when we don't try non-lethal issues for someone to have a trial. 
I begin to question, well, what the hell is really going on? They killed him so fast. And I understand that your life, self-preservation. But let me tell you something. All the training that you guys do, officers, are there no negotiators anymore? Or that shit we see on TV? On CSI and and, and JAG and (laughs) NCIS New Orleans and NCIS Los Angeles. There are no more negotiators in the world. I'm just asking. I'm just asking because I feel so sad, y'all, for that, for those parents, for those mothers and fathers as I watch them on the news. And if you don't feel no kind of way for those parents and even... For Miss Adriana Reyes, whose son was the killer. You got to feel for her, too. What if you wake up tomorrow and they got your son's picture on TV and said, or your daughter's picture on TV and said, they're dead because they did such and such. You'd be like, what the fuck? Can you imagine the grief and the guilt that she feels? Imagine the grief and the guilt that you're going to feel if that's you. So before we start looking at, well, what type of mother was she? Bitch, what type of mama are you? Because ain't no rule book to this shit. Because I got three grown-ass children. And we raised them to the best of their ability because there's no diagram and there's no rule book. No matter what anybody tells you or has an opinion about how you should raise your motherfucking child. I want some compassion going on here, y'all. Because it's so sad. And we got to wake up as a community. I'm now nah, I'm talking to us, Soul Tribe. We got to wake up as a community and understand. Protect the babies. We got to protect the babies. We got to see the babies. We got to love the babies. And let me tell y'all something. This public school system shit is full of shit. This in quote unquote so-called black communities prison pipeline. Prison pipeline. That's all it is. It's prison pipeline. You have teachers that don't care. You still have teachers doing things that they used to do to kids back in the 30s when they say, well, Jimmy, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'm going to be a doctor. And say, oh, no, you can't be a doctor. Don't you think too highly of yourself, Jimmy? You know, you could be a carpenter. You can even work at my daddy's mechanic shop. But doctor, oh, I just don't want you to be disappointed. That shit still happens today. Let me tell you something. Here in South Carolina at this wonderful school, previous grades, like I say, my granddaughter, is third grade. She's about to be fourth grade next year. During one of her previous years, I won't call out what year it was, I had to go up to the school and explain to the teacher that you don't call a black child a liar. My grandkid gets off the bus and she was inconsolable. She's crying. And and, and I'm like, what's wrong, baby? Mrs. Such and Such cursed at me today. You know, I'm livid. But this is a child's perspective. Excuse me? She cursed at me today. She cursed at you, and she had a letter in her backpack. She pulled it out, gave it to me. We walked from the bus stop, okay? I'm like, this bitch didn't cuss at my fucking baby, okay? <laughs> you know, I'm ready. I'm ready to get up there and, and, and articulate my voice because you have to, community. You have to be involved. I don't give a damn how lazy you are and how you don't want to go to school. Stop sending your kids to school. For the school to be babysitters, because they ain't even sitting them. They're getting them ready for prison in some communities that are quote unquote black. Okay? So I read this letter, and she is explaining, you know, my grandbaby, you know, they have color code systems for behavior during the day. And my granddaughter calls herself a ballerina princess ninja. And damn it, some days she's on all day. So I understand. But as we explained to all teachers, and even when my sons were in school, because I was living in Beaufort, South Carolina at the time. If you've ever been there, guys, beautiful. If you've never been there, beautiful. The ocean's right there. You know, Hunting Island, the Atlantic Ocean's right there. Hilton Head, the Gullah people. Go down there. Go to the Gullah Festival. Check it out. However, get back to the grandkids. So 
I read the letter and she's saying, grandkid was being, you know, talking to her friend. And she told her, you know, mm -mm, you guys, stop talking. And her and the little boy who lived across the street, you know, stop talking, guys. We're working on this. So she warned my grandbaby a few times. So she changed her color from green to yellow. My grandbaby went and changed her color <laughs> back to green on the board. <laughs> okay. Her little friend pimped her out. So teacher asked her, did you change your color? My grandkids said, no. Well, your little friend, I'm not going to call these kids names, said you changed your color and, you know, you were lying. Okay, so for any of you people that are of other nationalities, Caucasian, Asian, Latino, in the copper-colored community, a.k.a. the black community, what's the one word that you don't say when you were a kid? And you'll get smacked in the mouth. He lying. You don't say that. Your grandma smacked shit at you. Your mama smacked. What did you say? You just cursed. We teach our children that that's a bad word. And so I went to school and I explained that to her. And she said, well, we teach them the difference between a lie and the truth. Well, in our community, we teach them telling a story or not being truthful. But the word liar or lie, that's considered an adult word. She said, I had no idea. Really? I said, well, are there any, and I said this term to her so she could understand, any African-American teachers in here? Well, we, we, we do. We have a, a kindergarten teacher there. Okay, so let's go ask her a question. She said, I never knew that. See, there are cultural differences within every community. Cultural differences within every community. So I had to explain to her, within our community, that is a curse word. Same thing, my son's in high school in Buford. <laughs> Teacher kept putting him in the hallway every day. Now, my sons have never been troublemakers at school because we don't play that shit. We that parent. <laughs> we went and sat in their classes in middle school. Who knows the answer? My son does. <laughs> If they ever thought they were going to be class clown, we were right there sitting in class. We, I took the day off work. Me and my wife went and sat in class all day because both my boys were in the same grade. So when they split classes, I went with one son. She went with the other. Bitch, you want to act a fool and be the class clown? Well, I'm going to come sit in this bitch with you because I let these teachers know they have a support system. They have parents, and you're not going to treat them any kind of way. So she kept putting my son in the hallway. So my son started feeling self-conscious. He's he's coming home. He he was like, well, she says, you know, somebody has allergies and my smell is bothering her. Okay, so my son is super clean. Okay, that's my oldest son. He actually just turned 27 today. And I love you, son. Super clean. He was super clean, never a troublemaker. And this was his art teacher. He loves art. He can He can draw just amazingly. I mean, I'm so proud of him. Um, So... He put, she put him in the hallway three days in a row. So he would come home from school. Son, what's wrong? I got put in the hallway again today in my art class. For what? I don't know. She said her allergies, you know, act up when I'm around. So he was doing shit like he'd take a shower at night. Then he would get up in the morning, take another shower. He made it his business not to wear any cologne to school or this and that. Now, if she'd have been talking about my other son, I'd have been like, boy, wash that damn cologne off. Because, you know, some of you boys, y'all don't wash your ass. Y'all, cologne don't do it. And this damn Axe spray really got your mind fucked up. OK, so after the third time, I went up to the school. My wife was like, don't go up to that school. And, uh, I went up there and I went, I would like to speak with the principal, please. Oh, shit. The lady behind the counter, the Caucasian lady. Is there a problem? Yes, I would like to speak with the principal about my son. He seems to be being harassed by his teacher. Honey, when I finished laying them out. The bitch calls me. I, I hope, I, I mean, I didn't understand. I really don't know who it is. Then why did you choose to put my son in the hallway? Because the principal, as I explained things to him, who was a quote unquote, the misnomer name African-American, stated, well, we do have teachers with allergies, but the teachers who have allergies, they have fans in their classroom, but I've never known this teacher to do that. So we go there and the, the principal opens the door. And she, he said, is such and such in your class today? And she looks at me, and I'm looking very professional, like, bitch, I'll sue the fuck out of you. You know what I mean? That look. 
ready to rip her a new one. She's like, uh, uh, no. So, okay. Filed a complaint, this and that. So, she calls me. Oh, I, I, I'm so sorry. I really didn't know who it was. I.e., if you didn't know who it was, then why are you constantly putting my son in the hallway? Well, comes to find out my son was the only person of color in her classroom. And he was the best art student. And it annoyed her. She said, no, no, I would never do that. Then explain to me why, if you don't know who this is, who's making your allergies go crazy, that you chose him. She had no answer for that. I, of course, I had to rip her ass a new one professionally. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, I said all that to say that, guys, as a community, be a part of the schools. And the way things are going right now in this country, we might definitely, well, let me say, you might consider definitely taking your children out of these public schools because the elite, yes, the elite, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but have we heard of any school? An elite private school where they've had shootings on such a mass scale with, with children being killed besides Columbine. And I don't think Columbine was a private school. But but have we had that in this country? No. Why don't we have that in this country? Why isn't somebody walking in and shooting up an elite school? Because they won't have it. You're not even going to get that close to do that. But in the south side of Chicago, as far as black kids dying every day and this and that, and all those guns on the street, nobody cares. But when it's a mass shooting like this of non-copper colored people, everyone cares. And trust me, I'm not making light of this situation at all, y'all. It, it, it. It burns my soul that we are a country so full of hatred and so full of mental illness. The systems have created this. We're so full of self-hatred and so full of not having worth for ourselves. The systems have created this. So we really need to think about some things, y'all. We got to protect the babies. And we're fighting over the dumbest shit. Some of y'all still talking about Trump this, Trump that, Trump this. Trump ain't even hearing babies dying all over the country in mass shootings. Let's fix the fucking system instead of trying to get in with the elite and trying to be seen with those people who have the money. We can make our own money, our own community, our own everything, but we got to change our systems and we got to change the way we treat people and we have to address mental fucking illness in this country. I say it again. Nothing's going to change. Until we address mental fucking illness in this country. You understand me? The systems are so fucked up, we done ran out of baby food. How we run out of baby food? Come on. How many children are sick behind baby food? Y'all sitting up screaming about these abortion laws, but we just had 19 children and two adults get murdered. We got babies that got sick and went in the hospital because we don't give a fuck about nothing here but capitalism. So we ain't got no baby food. And you not going to tell me, motherfucking government people and you goddamn corporate people in Wall Street, that it's because that plant was shut down. Bitch, please. You're not going to tell me it's because of that. It's because you don't value the people who live in this country. If they're not from this country, you value them. You value them. All those $450,000 that you gave to immigrants that came over here. And if y'all don't believe me, look this shit up. Now, I keep telling you, don't believe me, check it out. I want y'all to think I'm the craziest person on the planet. All that money y'all gave. We shouldn't, to each individual person, we shouldn't have homeless people. We shouldn't be running out of baby food. Gas prices shouldn't be this motherfucking high. <laughs> and we should not, should not. If you're so worried about lives of children through abortion and shaking signs and shit, and <clears throat> then we need to change our systems. We need to change our policies. 
We need to change our thought pattern. And people say, see, that's why you need to vote. It doesn't matter who you put in, Democrat, Republican. It's about the fucking money, y'all. It's about the money. It's about the special interest groups getting what the fuck they want. Okay? That's what y'all need to understand. And the shit that's going on behind the scenes. All the money that America has, we should not be outsourcing any jobs. And we should not be doing shit, sending shit to other countries for working. The workers are here. They're here. There's people here who want to work. But capitalism says let's do it cheaper. So we support sweatshops in different parts of the world until we pissed off with that country. Then we send our children and our babies over there to fight a war that has nothing to do with us with mental manipulation and propaganda. Then the poor, the poor, the thing that bothers me the most is... We send our people to war and treat our veterans like shit when they come back mangled and maimed. My family's full of veterans. My father's a veteran. And I thank all you veterans for your service. However, veterans shouldn't even have to pay house. They Listen, when they come back, they should have everything they need. If they ain't got no legs, you should have them some legs made. Just special fit them. If they lost their arm, have their arms ready. And they shouldn't have to pay for shit. Once you go to war as a veteran, I don't think you should have to pay for shit. And then you're talking about PTSD. Back when my father was in the Vietnam War, they told you the real name of a shell shocked. PTSD, post-traumatic stress syndrome. It sounds all wonderful. That's what they're telling people that you have because of this pandemic. Oh, uh, being locked up in the house, you have post-traumatic stress syndrome. No, your ass was shell shocked. From social isolation. Some people can't take that if they never had it before. There's so much stimulation going on with um, social media and internet and just technology. These children today could not live the way we lived in the 80s. They could not live that way. They couldn't live that way. Because we've allowed the systems to manipulate the minds of our children. And we're not doing anything to try to find out what's wrong. And I'm so sad that something happened to Salvador Ramos that made him do this. See, that's the part y'all don't get. That's the compassion that I have in my heart. Yeah, I get pissed as shit. And I I punch a bitch in the face. But I bet you if I say I'm going to punch a bitch in the face and put that on Facebook, I'll be in Facebook jail. But this motherfucker put on there. He shot his, he told everybody, I'm going to shoot my grandma. Then got back on and said I shot her ass. And then... 15 minutes later, per what they said, all the reports, I'm about to go shoot up at elementary school. Y'all, there's no way that that should have happened and no one was alerted. There's no way. No way. All right, y'all. I got to get out of here. I just wanted to talk about this. I just wanted to say, and once again, this is not a gun issue because they're going to use this, the powers that be. To try to take away the Second Amendment rights. And let me tell y'all again before you... She's high like a Trump supporter. Fuck all of them. I support righteousness. I support treating all people fairly. And I don't hate nobody. I just think y'all need to stop fucking with us. And put a little more effort in on the things that's really going on. Because I've been harassed so much in my life. Let me tell you something. I got, I'm going to tell you this story. I got harassed while a dude was robbing the store across the street. I was in my car and this police officer was fucking with me. And this Caucasian guy was robbing the store across the street from where he pulled me over. And I wasn't doing shit. My insurance was current. I don't have any tickets. I've never had warrants. I ain't killed nobody. None of that. I was driving while black in a nice ass motherfucking truck. That was mine. Where'd you get this truck? Oh, I'm this truck. And this man is over here holding people at gunpoint across the street. Hmm. Y'all, we got to get it together. Well, y'all got to get it together. You're going to lose a lot more if we don't change our concept and our thinking. So once again, I'm calling on all the light workers. Send up the energy of healing. Send up the energy of blessings. Send up the energy of love. And if hatred steps in there say I thank you for that thought but I've grown past that send out the energy of wisdom alright once again to all those parents 
of those 19 babies, those fourth graders. My condolences goes out to you. Let me tell you something, guys. I don't know how you're going to make it through it. But I'm going to be praying for you, no matter what. And the two teachers who lost their lives, your family, if you are listening, I don't know how you're going to make it through it. But I'm going to be sending you positive vibrations and upliftment. Okay? All I want is for upliftment. I, the contract I signed as a light worker when I came here to this plane is to help the earth cleanse herself, Mother Gaia, Mother Timat, to cleanse herself and take us from the 3D vibration to the 5D vibration. And these mass murders are 3D vibration, y'all. I need you to understand that. And we need to elevate and uplift because trust me, with these mass murders and mass shootings, no one is safe. No one. Stop thinking. It didn't happen in my community. Stop thinking. I have private security. Stop thinking. Ain't nobody coming for me because I got all this money. Shit. If it happened to them, it can happen to you. So care about it. All right? All right? All right, family. I got to get out of here. I love y'all so much. I appreciate you so much. I thank you once again for listening to Let's Speak It Out Loud the podcast where we speak truth and we speak healing all right once again i want to thank you i hope i've said something to make you think i hope i've said something to touch your spirit and i hope i've said something to give you hope and healing all right y'all we own this planet together and other people can try to leave this bitch and go somewhere else But human, we are all spiritual beings having a human experience. And I know some of you on this planet, you are different entities and you are here to cause destruction. And you are here to cause negative vibrations. And you are here to put the people on this planet in a state of fear. You are here to put the people in this planet in a state of fear and in a state of just disarray. There are entities that feed off of our fearful energy skies. So we have to be cognizant about what we are feeling and what we are putting out. Remember, sensitive to energies. We are in the retrograde. And remember when I told y'all in this retrograde, things tend to happen sometimes. Things slow down. Things end up being fucked up. This is a spiritual thing that's happening, y'all. This ain't just physical. And don't think about it that way because that's not what it is. All right? All right, y'all. Once again, I love y'all. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful evening. I'm sending you love, peace, prayers, happiness, upliftment, and I'll talk to you soon, Soul Tribe. Peace.